Hello, Solomon Mars here, Creative Goblin. Uh, this is the video commentary for Goblin issue 14B. I'm joined in this commentary by a special commentary guest, um, Calicard, uh, aka Kevin Olson, <laughs> on DeviantArt. Um, uh, let's see, I guess we could talk about the cover that you did for issue 14B. Uh, tell us a little about that, what you were thinking, you know, what what um, really inspired you to sort of create this specific image. Um. Uh, yes, hello. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was given the drawing of Vimeo Coco before it had actually been put up, so it was a brand new character I, even I didn't know. Yeah. And I just... The way the character looked, I thought I'd put her in a forest. And actually, originally, it was just like her looking wistfully with her hand on the tree, and then you told me I should put the gun in there. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I think that looked actually the way better. It looks the way the arms place. It looks like she's actually holding the gun. It looks kind of weird without it. Ooh. And then the. I forget their names, the little bug robots. <laughs> yeah, I always I forget their names too. That's sad. Ugh. Okay, well, if you can forget them, then I'm allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, those got put in the tree as well, and I think one of the things I played with with this drawing, apart from my usual ones, was like lighting and stuff. I actually overlaid a, a slight yellow on the left and purple on the right. You can probably barely see it, if at all. But, I don't know, I just, I wanted a dynamic lighting from like off the page, as opposed to my usual lighting that I do. Okay, that's cool. Actually, I use this cover to experiment with a lot of things, like the tree and the bush in the foreground. I just play a lot with the uh, composition. And you did it all in, in Flash? Oh yeah, I guess that is kind of notable. Most people draw in like Photoshop or Sci or Sketchbook Pro and all that, but I, I prefer drawing in Flash. It's yeah. it's an animating program used mo more for like applications nowadays, but I like drawing in it. I like the smooth vectors and you can easily fill in the lines. Yeah, that's what I like about your work is that you you actually work in Flash, and it just has a different feel, and you know, a different makes it really work in a different style. I like that. Yeah, yeah my style uh, tends more to self shading anyway. I mean, I guess if I was more of an airbrusher, it wouldn't make sense to use Flash, but it works for what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of some other stuff about the cover. It's just all this stuff that I like. I I like the, the like the levels of shading in there. Um, I like those three levels. Um, oh yeah, I love two tone shading. Yeah, that was different. I think at that point you were you were just starting that, huh? Yeah, I played around with it. I ch like basically just like do two tones, but like it was in random places. It was just kind of varying the color. But I found this style pretty, you know, around here. I'm always playing with like the the variant of the colors and how dark they get. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm just think, I'm just looking at the cover because it's been a while since I I looked at it and it just makes me smile. It's like oh yeah that's cool. <laughs> uh, I was actually kind of scared because it's like a character I didn't know. I'm like I don't want to screw this up. Oh um, well. <laughs> I remember those goggles gave me trouble. I'm like how do I angle goggles on like a a head that shape? Yeah, I know. I have the same problem with her. Um, it's it's a weird thing because I don't think, I don't think those goggles would actually sit on her head. Normally, I don't. Just the way that she doesn't have, she doesn't have like ears and things like that. So, um, <laughs> it's you know, it's all fantasy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because magic. Yes, exactly. Because um, logic. <laughs> um. Hmm. Oh, I don't know what else to say to talk about. Um, oh yeah, also the, uh, I think I used the texture on the bush as from a program called Alchemy. You can okay. basically, like, it uses shapes and stuff to draw with. Like, I would do all these like crazy designs and I would just overlay them and I thought they were like really neat textures. Oh yeah, I think that, that, was, that was you that I had that conversation with about that program. <laughs> I forgot I haven't used it in a while. Yeah, okay. Oh, I like that. I feel bad for covering up so much stuff with the with the logo and everything. Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, man. Um, wow. Yeah, that is really strange. That was I just kind of threw that character at you. 
this unknown character. Wow. Hmm. Well, I guess, uh, do you want to carry on through the rest of the, the book with me? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know when was, when was the last time uh, maybe you saw this issue. Maybe you have questions about some stuff. I don't know. I'm trying no to remember. Spoilers, though. No spoilers. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ramble, probably, but feel free to break in at any point and, um, you know, ask questions, say something. Um, so, oh gosh, 14B. Oh, the Rune Claws, uh, just bad guys, just horrible, horrible people, um, all coming in to stop the good guys. <laughs> um, <coughs> I'm trying to think. I knew... I was definitely playing around with um, with sort of the playful nature between uh, Riduha and, and the Rock Eater and sort of um, their relationship and how they have an easier relationship than uh, Jeff and she uh, and sort of playing up that nature again. Um, and of course bringing, bla bringing back the uh, this dagger that was taken off of 26. Um, in order to give it to Amy, it definitely will be a device that shows up later in the story. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm trying to, I don't know. Um, there's not a lot to say about the Rune Claws. They're, they're really one-dimensional characters um, really one-dimensional characters. <laughs> I like their, uh, their bird helmets, though. Like, really? Like you can just have plenty of fairy designs. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, that, that's probably the most fun that I have with those characters. Um, with the little designs and stuff. Um. Well, yeah, I mean, it can allow, it can allow, like, goons without them all being just generic the same thing. Yeah. Just random soldiers. All wearing mm -hmm. the same uniform. Um, those pistols definitely had to cost them money, though. That's something I, I never really talk about in the actual book. Um, the fact that guns are they're fairly rare unless you're in the in the military. Um, oh, okay. They're expensive, and there's just so much stuff that I've never addressed because I figure maybe no one really would care. But um, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, in any universe, you don't have to explain everything. Yeah. Like, oh, where did Jeff get his shoes? You don't need to know that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm glad I dropped that storyline. <laughs> uh, there was a story about Jeff's shoes, but it was ridiculous, so, yeah. It was just a little off-side. Oh, wow. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's not until later he gets... He was supposed to get a different pair of shoes that he really, really enjoyed, um, and it had... It had something to do with uh, 26's brother, um, and it's, it was just a much older version of this of a, of a, a earlier story. And I decided against it completely. Um, I, I had no idea. I was just making a joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can see. I mean, that's how random. That's how random my my uh, my brain works. Um, oh, I love this. I actually love this part where she punches this rock and. The little piece juts out and smashes into uh, into these guys. I remember. That was uh, awesome. Uh, oh, I remember um, somebody commenting on how much blood was in this issue, and I I don't know. I think there was a lot more in like issue two. Um, I mean, there were some severed limbs I think in this issue, but definitely a lot more uh, more blood in, in issue two, but. I don't know. Um, I always have to think of new ways to, to, to show how much more advanced the Rock Eater is than uh, like Jeff or even Raduha. Um, mm -hmm. It's always difficult though. Uh, fight scenes are... Well, there's a few later issues where you'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really started just reaching in there and just 
pulling anything out, and I was like, okay, this works, yeah! Uh, oh. Dermakoko with her giant gun. Um, I thought, I, I don't know, the reason, I, these scenes in here where, uh, she's, well, she actually is going to kill, um, Lancaster, I believe, I think it's his name, Lancaster? Yeah, Lancaster. Um, it's just, I, I wanted, I thought, I was thinking about, like, just history, and, and how, you know, you have, like, well, you know, like, in America, and how you have just this whole history of, like, you know, people moved in and pushed the, the native people out, and then, you know, or how you have, like, this black market trade of, of just these old artifacts and you have these 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 you know, like people that have absolutely no respect for the uh, where those artifacts came from that kind of situation and I wanted it to to be just this really intense situation where like a guy like Lancaster who is that kind of person is faced with an actual person from that that culture you know mm -hmm. um, who's not supposed to exist, so he, he also doesn't know how to deal with that. You know, the witch clockers, you know, they're, they've been relegated to myth. So to see one up close and in person is, you know, he's pooping his pants probably. <laughs> um, and then it turns out that these, the masks are actually a part of the, uh, sort of the, the burial boxes. And I'll, I'll, I'll show those in a later issue, but, um, they're sort of the decorative pieces, you know. They were never actually worn by the uh, any of the witch clockers, but they sort of represent each one of them um, in their own sort of special way. They're sort of decorated by the family members and things like that, if any family members are, are still around. Um, so it's it's a big deal for her, um, mostly because just what her people have been through, which will you know, we talked about more in, in later issues. <laughs> it's really hard doing this commentary from this particular point in the story that I'm at, you know. Yeah. From so many issues later, and then coming back around and doing these early commentary. <laughs> it's really difficult not to, I guess, I shouldn't say spoil, because hopefully anyone that's watching these has already read through. Um, so none of this gets spoiled, but... Hmm. Yeah, but it's better that they experience it themselves. Mm -hmm. Just in the rare case that they haven't read them yet. Yeah. I like this picture. In my mind, it's really animated, and it's just like hopping or, or like skipping across the ground mm -hmm. like, like a, a stone on water. It's really weird. Uh, I wish I could animate all this, but... Mm. It's, it takes forever. <laughs> yeah. There's no way that I would animate Goblin by myself. Uh, no way. She has a really big nose beak thing going on there. Wow. Um, oh, yeah. And they're the, um, I believe they're called, like, Baro, Barotate, Bar or Barotate, I don't even know how to pronounce the word. I just write stuff down, and I like the way it looks, and I call it a day. <laughs> um, I think that, I think in my mind they were called Barotate. Anyways, but, you know, and there are a couple of different types. Um, I think earlier... There were the brownish ones, and those were explosive. And then there are these maroon type, and those are just kind of random. Um, and then there are the there are these sort of turquoise bluish type, and those she uses more so for surveillance. I mean, they can all technically be used for it, but the other ones are specifically for it. They have they, they can transmit really easily. Um, this is a bit gruesome, you know, uh, all these guys fighting, getting thrown around, that's terrible. Um, Lancaster's death is a little, it's a little gruesome. I, it's, it's one of the ways I wouldn't prefer to go out, you know, <laughs> um, just ripped apart by a bunch of, uh, mechanical spider-like things. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, not fun. He was a bad guy, so uh, <laughs> I, tend to, I tend to dispatch of the bad guys pretty, you know, I, I have no problem with getting rid of them. None at all. I just, any fate 
that's possible. I just uh, I'll just doom them to to just terrible terrible deaths. Um, especially a guy this bad who, I mean, he was involved in like child slavery slash child labor. You know, mm-hmm. he was kidnapping kids and things like that just to get his way. You know, just to to mine out these these mines and stuff. And yeah, I, I think he. Uh, I'm okay with him dying like this. And uh, clearly, uh, Vimmer Coco is. She just has this, <laughs> just, n- this really neutral look on her face. She just doesn't care. Um, yes, Robo Spider Death. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. This is very powerful. I wanted to show how powerful the weapons that the Witch Clockers have are. They're really, really advanced, really powerful. Of course, that will be explained a little bit more, <laughs> in more detail as the series goes on, but yeah, it just took his whole top half off. Um, again, another one of those scenes where in my mind it was animated, and like... Yeah, I have like a cartoon mentality right now, just imagining this. Yeah, because the next the next part would have been, and I, I honestly, I should have just made it a, oh no, <laughs> there's stuff popping up, hold on, sorry. Um, I had people popping up in there. Um, I should have done a two-part image where you know, his body slumps to its knees, you mm-hmm. know? Because that's, that's the other part. It was just supposed to just kind of go, you know, completely limp, and the bottom half is just going to slump. But, um, mm, I left it at that. I thought, you know, maybe this was powerful enough. Um, it's really, it's, that's an, it's an intense image. She just kind of blew that hole right through the thing. I don't know, a weapon that powerful is just, it's absurd. <laughs> but, that's the witch clockers. They are completely absurd. Um, and the rock eater talking about how power, you know, like the fact that you know, the the powerful weapons were another part of that whole myth of the witch clockers, um, which just kind of goes to tell you sh- um, that this pretty much is going back as far as her childhood, maybe even further, um, th- that they've been missing from uh, from the world. Um, and just all the, the stories that have been told, and no one knows whether or not they're true or not, and she's seeing that some of them are true, they're actual, they're, they're real. Um, I like that. Um, and Jeff, who's gone dashing through the the circle of blue fire. <laughs> and there were, I mean, there were just a lot of mysteries at this point. No one, no one knew what was really going on. Um, there was a lot of craziness, and uh, oh, and all these guys were actually like the two old men were were actually uh, Lancaster's uncles, and I never really, I didn't explore it um, as much as I was originally going to explore it. Um, like I know I mentioned in an earlier commentary how I took this story was actually supposed to be a part of the story that started in issue three, four, and five, where they were in Dunburst, and uh, it was supposed to continue from there straight into this series, but I just, I thought it was too early to introduce a character like Vimmer Coco and stuff, so I rearranged the issues so that there was that, that other bit that took place in between. Um, and before there was a lot, there was a lot more attention uh, being paid to to Lancaster and his uncles and their whole history in this in this uh, this sort of makeshift base they have in the mines because um, it's a family mine. But um, mm, ah well, <laughs> sad. Still standing. <laughs> Yeah, that picture. I think, I think the picture, the the picture where he's watching them, uh, was actually. Um, it was a picture in a picture. It was the the actual picture from earlier in, in the in the issue, laid in as the background, of, the picture of him looking out at it. And then I just I added in Photoshop more to the background and more, you know, uh, with the other characters in there and everything. I, Hmm. Um, yeah, and 
just more showing more of uh, the power of the witch clockers. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I like the uh, the death speech bubble. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, that's that's taken from uh, Usagi Yojimbo. I used to read those comics all the time by Stan Sakai. Um, and he does that all the time when characters die. You know, they don't make any death noise. They just, there's a, a speech bubble that comes out and it has a little skull in it. And that, I always loved the way his skulls looked. They're mm -hmm. so cartoony and stuff. And I just, I don't know. I guess I read them so long that it just became a part of my comic language and the way that I do stuff. Um, yeah, this, oh my goodness, all these pop-ups. Um, but uh, there's a lot of ums and uhs, sorry. <laughs> I think, oh, well, I guess, yeah, I guess really there is a lot of blood. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of blood in this issue, but no, there's, there can't be more than um, issue two. Well, it's hard to have gore without uh, blood. Yeah, yeah, and and a, and it's it's really necessary to bring across how intense the character of Vimmer Coco is. That, I mean, I, that's the main thing that I was doing. She's just cold and calculating, and she's she's on a mission. And these people, one, they've already disrespected her entire culture, her entire history. So she has mm -hmm. that against them, and then two, she doesn't care. You know, she would probably kill Jeff and Amy and all of them if they got in her way, but mostly she's out to get these guys, so, you know, and, and get in and get out. Um, oh, and her in the library. And the, the little banter between her and, and uh, Sankofa. Wow, I blanked on his name for two seconds. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Wow, but um, and that was this was me playing up more uh of sort of a little bit telling a little bit more of the the history and that sort of mystery of what Senkofa actually might be about, and mm -hmm. her sort of explaining uh what how you know like really how he uh he came to be in there and what it means for him to be in there and um, the fact that it's it's sort of it's kind of like a punishment sort of like a prison you know that sort of thing um, that obviously he had to he, something had to have gone on for him to uh, to be put in that body but of course Sankofa doesn't really remember his memory is bad because that's one of the, the sort of side effects of that, you know, they, they, it's purposely done so that you forget over time. Um, and clearly she's just annoyed by him. <laughs> and he's trying to be, he's trying to be, you know, cute and he's being coy and stuff. Um, and it, it, it had actually been a long time since Senkofa had any really, any real interaction with any other characters other than Jeff. And I, I noticed it at, at this point when I was writing this, this dialogue back and forth. I was like, wow, he doesn't talk to anyone else except for Jeff. And I was like, wow. I mean, it makes sense because he doesn't really trust anybody really except for Jeff. Um, and, you know, he's just kind of secretive. But uh, there's something about Vimmer Coco. He kind of opens up to her. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Look at how cute and cuddly I am. <laughs> yeah. She's just not having it. <laughs> I like the, the little snort. She laughs. It's a little snort. She does that a lot, though. She does this little snort. I, I imagine it, um... I don't know what it was. I think at, at some point I saw a cartoon where there were these, like, birds or something. I don't remember what it was. But they did that. They snorted blew through their nostrils and they made this very distinct snorting sound like they had a really big beak and I and it just stuck with mm -hmm. me forever um it was probably a Disney cartoon or something <laughs> honestly um probably I'll have to look out for that now yeah, yeah. I wish I knew what it, I wish I could remember what it was but uh yeah 
And that's her talking about his fate and that it's a punishment, eternal and intentional. And poor Sankofa. But the truth the truth is we don't we don't know why. And that's that's one of the mysteries. Um Mm-hmm. Um, there's I, there's not a lot that I can say. <laughs> I feel really weird because there's not there's honestly not a lot I can actually say about this issue because so much of the story between Sankofa and Vimrakoko, you know, really it it plays you know they play a much bigger role later on in the story. I, I mean and. <coughs> So it's it's like the stuff I want to talk about. It's just no, no. It's just spoiler. Um, it would just be too. It, it would be wrong for me to talk about it. I do like that her reaction to uh, Jeff <laughs> and him talking him talking about Jeff and how talented he is and uh, and her realizing that he was the one who taught him how to use the circles of the fire and. There's this, there's something wrong with that, you know, how a sprite would know that. And it's it's just more. Just digging that that mystery hole even deeper as to, you know, you know, what Sankofa who he is and what is you know, what's his, his past and um I I really put some layers into this unintentionally. <laughs> I feel bad because it, it takes so long for that payoff later on, you know. Oh my goodness. Well, Mm. Hmm. I don't know, did you have any questions about like any of any of this any of the stuff in this issue or anything or uh no, I'm just holding back from saying anything from later issues. Hmm? <laughs> I'm just holding back from giving anything away from like later issues. Oh later oh yeah, later issues. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to do. Ah. Oh. Um but you, you can tell that this is an important scene between the two, and they're both pretty, like, secret at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely... They both have stuff that they want to hide, but, um... There, there's obviously some sort of connection, but, yeah, they, they have... They definitely have stuff to hide. Um, Vimmer Coco has serious secrets, and... Seiko I, I he has secrets, too, but, um... At least, you know, one other person pretty much knows a lot about his stuff and his secrets and that's Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. 500 years missing from recorded history. Mm. Mm. Well, and that was just a little bit, a little history lesson, yeah, a little history lesson about the the witch cockers and what role they played in in uh, sort of the foundation of Mahu and uh, how they they once uh, actually controlled the throne of Aspa, which is uh, the throne in the Empire of Sands. It's the the main throne that the Crimson King currently sits on. Um, but yeah hinting at the, the fact that they maybe once once controlled it um, and controlled all of Mahu. Uh, oh, and then we go back to Rock Eater and everybody just really tearing up the place. And it, these guys are just cannon fodder, really. The Rune Claws are just cannon fodder. They're just there to get trashed and, uh, and to demonstrate. It's like a workout for these guys. <laughs> they just, they're just practicing new and uh, uh, just different different forms of logic and stuff. Um, it's just weird. Uh, <laughs> there it is again. Oh yeah, the <laughs> skull, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, now, what, I, I believe what comes up in a few pages was only surprising. Only one person commented on it, and that was, uh, and that was, LD. Um, and when it comes up, I'll actually, I'll, I'll talk about it 
re or I'll I'll make notice of it. Um, I some of this I actually stuck in like sometimes I'll stick in things into the uh, into the story that weren't originally in like when I'm just kind of wrote it out and everything and uh, just because I'll read back through and some stuff won't make sense. And one of the things that didn't make sense is how no one seemed to be concerned about Jeff. <laughs> Everyone was so caught up in the fighting. And I thought about it and I said, well, I think of all the people that would be concerned, Amy would be concerned most. Um, because, you know, I mean, the Rock Eater and Jeff, I mean, yeah, they, they have their relationship, but it's sort of distant, you know, especially at this point. Um, Reduha doesn't know Jeff at all except through what he's been told by, uh, by the Rock Eater. But Amy would be a little bit more concerned. She's been traveling with him all this time. Um, but no one else just, no one, it, it bothered me that no one was concerned. So I, you know, threw in a little bit of that and they talked about, you know, um, a little bit of what the, uh, what the Blue Fire Circles were used for somewhat. Um, and I think I talked about that again in a, in a past um, commentary where there was a scene cut out of issue 12B, yeah, out of 12B, where um, it showed 26's brother actually traveling through the Red Castle using the Circles of Blue Fire. And, um, and that's normally what they're, they're, they're used for with the few people that know how to use them. They mostly just use them to move from one area to another. You know, and Jeff ends up using it uh, for a different reason, which I'll talk about at the end of this issue. Um, uh, I was really proud of these lighting effects. <laughs> uh, it's just filters, multiple using multiple filters uh, in Photoshop, layering on top and then and changing some of the, the, the opacity levels, the attributes. And then also using there is a lighting effect in Photoshop that I went in and used um, where you can set up specific colors to play off of one another and I used that yeah. and I just brought up the intensity really really bright and then I took the characters because I mean it, I, you have to do it all you have to do it to that one layer so originally there was a background in there and I had colored everything um, and there were details on the ground and everything and what I did is the only that's the only way that you can use those filters is if you apply it to everything all on one flattened layer so I had to flatten them apply it make a copy then unmerge all those all those layers and you know like paste it paste this picture in and then put them on top so that the characters would sit on top of the uh, of that lighting effect so they could be seen because otherwise they would just they would have fa they faded completely in there um, like kind of like the circle of blue fire is it's it's sort of really fading in there and, and it looks kind of weird it's hard to see that that's where the light's being generated from but uh i wanted to to just have this blindingly bright light when he reappeared because i just i wanted it to be the weirdest thing that had happened yet i guess that's kind of hard to do because some weird stuff happens in the series <laughs> but um and then jeff just kind of reappearing again playing with uh different filters, inverting images, and then changing the colors. Um, just having fun, experimenting. Yeah, filters are pretty uh, pretty magical. They can help mm -hmm. a lot, depending on what effect you want to get. Yeah. And it was just hard to sort of, con con you know, to con convey, like, the stuff that, that I see, you know, like the images that I'm seeing in my head. It's like, mm -hmm. well, man, is that possible? Do I even know how to do that? It's like, I don't know how to do that. So I just come up with the closest possible thing, and... I want it sort of like a um, X-ray negative sort of thing, uh, like um, I can't even think of an example of it. I'm sure there are plenty of examples of stuff like that, and in, in, in some show I've seen, or, or some movie, or something. But that's that's the kind of the thing I was I, I was going for, without actually showing his bones and stuff through him. Um, almost like what I did in. I believe it was issue five when he was being tossed around by that old lady who was sitting on that that water sprite. Um, it's a little bit of that same effect, and and it faded in. That's 
almost the original image, but I, again, I, I went over it with a uh, another lighting filter, um, a, l a lighting effect, and I made sure that it only applied to the character and not everything else. So it's just on the character, and he's then laid on top of a clean version of himself with all the color and all the shading, and then I brought down the opacity on it so that it just kind of... It, it has this weird sort of washed out look, but I liked it. Yay! Hmm. His sneaker is green up there. That's interesting. I never noticed that it did that. It turned green. Hmm. Oh well. Um, and then he comes back. I love the smoke coming off of him. That's fun. <laughs> and I just threw that little little bit in there where he says it was worst landing yet, sort of indicate that this isn't the first time. This is not. This is not new. This is not new at all. Um, yeah, I like all the smoke effects. Really? <laughs> yeah, like off his body and clearing around like little clouds of dust. <laughs> I had fun with them. Uh, I really went crazy with the, uh, the, uh, the texture brushes. Oh my goodness. That's like my favorite thing about the way you color Goblin, though, is like those textures. Really? <laughs> yeah, and the walls and the effects and all that. Uh, I yeah, unfortunately, I have to use them a lot less now because I don't have uh, the old version of Photoshop that I had. I don't have CS3 anymore, or at mm -hmm. least it's not working for some odd reason on my computer currently. So I'm using Photoshop six, and it doesn't work the same. <laughs> mm, so ugh. Um, all I can do is sort of I have like the texture. I have sort of palettes laid out in the same at the same size as these uh the pages of goblin and just it's one whole sheet of just all the textures that i usually use for rocks and stuff and i just take that and i'll trim it out in the shape that i need it and stuff mm -hmm. and you know it's, it's the the cheap way of doing it sort of i mean it's, it's kind of the same effect but i can't manipulate them as much as i could when it was literally a brush um, well, yeah, like the like the leaves in the cover that I did. That's why I just had like a full sheet of texture from Alchemy, and then I would just mask it onto that one oh, thing. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and I would set it to overlay. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah, overlay is my best friend in Flash. Oh. I don't. I don't know that I've ever used it in Flash. Hmm. Wow. I'm re I'm kind of bad with Flash. I mean, to a degree. My it takes a learning, but once you know it, you know, you can find its tricks. This is the scene. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one. Um, you know, she throws she throws the dagger and catches this guy in the throat. And um, <laughs> one person commented on that. And, <laughs> and he said, you know, and, and that was the thing. We had a conversation about it, and, uh, and LD was like, well, maybe that's a good thing that nobody commented on it because maybe it means that no one was surprised that Amy would do something like that or maybe it, di it just didn't shock them you know that that she would do that because of the situation that they were in and I mean that was my thinking too was that you know these guys were under pressure it was, it was a matter of survival and instinct kicked in for yeah. Amy um, but uh, it was it was supposed to be sort of surprising you know because it's Amy and up to this point she really hasn't been uh, very aggressive uh, except yeah. for the point when she was possessed <laughs> um, but yeah I mean it's it's sort of even a little surprising for the characters and I wanted them to sort of they're reacting Amy's being all super girly and stuff and, and uh, Jeff's surprised yeah everybody's a little um, a little shaken by that they're just kind of looking at her like wait what um, yeah <laughs> his filthy filthy shirt it's just filthy um oh and she asked where he where he went she said, where do you go where did you go and and Riduha again is sort of uh reinforcing the idea that you only travel distance you know um in one plane you know from here to there from a to b and instead mm -hmm. you know jeff is going uh <laughs> From instead of from A to B, he's going from A to twenty. You know, he's going <laughs> in a completely different direction. Um, 
again. And, and this was just another one of those things where I, I stuck something in because it made sense to me uh, where all this stuff is going on and again, a character was forgotten about it. And it's like, wait, where is Sankova? And, and nobody knew where he was this whole time, so I had Jeff bring it up. And yeah, that's, a, hmm? that's a really important thing in comics is uh, making sure you don't lose your characters. Oh yeah, it happens all the time. I used to read uh, X-Men a lot and Characters get lost in the X-Men. But yeah. just, I mean, they have a massive roster of characters, though. But, um... Well, yeah, especially with that many, these people get lost. But, like, I remember one of my comics, like, just the nature of it, because it's more cartoony. Like, I had a, a character straight up just say, wait, where were you this whole time? It's like, oh, I was here the whole time. What are you talking about? No one <laughs> forgot me. Yeah, it's... It's just one of those... It's one of those weird things. But, um... You know, I always... I always try to make sure that everybody stays relevant, you know, and mm -hmm. I've, there have been a few characters, you know, especially later on where they sort of disappeared, and I, I made sure that the characters mentioned that they disappeared, and it's just that sometimes you don't have a place for that character, you know, and, um, especially with certain scenes. This one, it was, it was a little bit, in, it was a little bit more intentional that Sankofa was missing. Obviously, he was talking to Vimmer Coco the whole time, um, and I just, but I, I, I felt like, I know sometimes I, I end up putting myself, I, I, well, I say I put myself in a, in the, in the reader's seat and sort of imagine that they would go, wait, wait, what's going on? Where's Sankofa? This is dumb. This is unrealistic. You know, <laughs> I just, I just imagine everybody is angry with, angry with me at all times about <laughs> the way that things play out in the book. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's so, a great attitude. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just always trying to make sure that, you know, everything is, is stable at all times, and it's just like, oh, wait, 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 oh, gosh, don't be angry with me. Okay, this is what's going on. Here are my excuses. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, but that's, I, I, I guess it's not really the case. I'm just weirdly paranoid like that. This is a really uncomfortable scene for me. The look on Sankofa's face. I mean, I know he's... He's happy that Jeff is back, but that is really, really unnerving for me to see Sankofa big happy smile like that. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> but um Yeah, wow. It is different from the normal expression he has. Yeah, he's usually kind of uh neutral or angry or I guess sullen. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of word bubbles, I also like the uh, just the blank word bubble. Oh, where there's nothing in it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... There's, like, it, it, it gives attention, but nothing has to be said. Yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't know. It's just one of those things where... Yeah, it's just one of those periods where your mouth is open, nothing's coming out. You want to say something, but... Yeah. yeah, it's not the same as an ellipses. Yeah. Um, oh, I guess man, that's really just Jeff's reaction to seeing a witch clock for the first time. There was a lot of really weird distortion with the character of Vimrococo in the beginning. I, I remember that. Um, because I, it had been so long since I had originally created the character, I just, I didn't practice drawing her enough times so that when I got into these first issues with her in it, I was comfortable. And I, I, re I regret not practicing because like her, uh, her plumage on her head and everything, uh, the little feathers and stuff, they they just look really awkward in the beginning, and it's it's all sorts of odd. But uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't draw that draw attention to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, again. Um, it's one of those. There have been a few situations throughout the story where characters have warned Jeff to sort of stay away from Sankofa, to sort of end that friendship. Uh, here's Vimmer Coco doing it. I believe uh, the Rock Eater has done it at least once, if not multiple times. She just flat out doesn't seem to like Sankofa at this point. Um, and then he was even warned by a Sleemer way back in issue two. Um, this just I wanted that to be sort of this, this consistent thing, you know, people just warning him against it and Jeff going, whatever. And just kind of going on about his day. Yeah, Psychopod doesn't seem like a bad guy. Why is everybody warning him? I don't know. Um, I know, but... 
Hmm. <laughs> um, it's a completely confusing ending to this. Everyone's just completely confused. A fight has just happened. The fight is done. And suddenly, Jeff comes barreling through this glowing uh, circle of, of light. And uh, a witch clocker appears. It's just, it's all crazy. It's just throwing everything at, at everybody at the same time. Um, and having the character sort of react to that situation. Because, um, I mean, I imagine it's it's just as... Con I want it, I definitely want it to uh, get that across, is that it's just as confusing for the characters in the story as it would be for anyone, uh, you know, approaching, the, you know, like actually, actually reading the story. Um, I mean, I imagine it's somewhat confusing because all the pieces haven't been put into place, but still... Um, Oh no, wait. Okay, I, I always have to check through. I always, I'm always afraid that I mess up the locations of where the witch clockers are from and where, uh, where Amy's people are from, you know, east and west. And I always, in my mind, I always invert them, but uh, it's correct. They are on the east. You said um, to have like little cheat sheets with the lore on them. Yeah. Um. Eastland Islands. They didn't even name. They didn't name them by by name. I should have. Well, I guess it doesn't. It doesn't. Ma it's too late now. I don't. I usually don't go back and and change anything. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't call them by name, but oh well. Um, at least he did mention Centris. That much he did. Uh, <laughs> And then just uh, w that, this is one of the things I, I want. I try to avoid definitely now more and more is cramming a bunch of dialogue at the very end to sort of wrap everything up because I know oh, yeah. I'm, I'm at the end of the issue, and I just have this bad habit of doing that. And that's so weird. I'm gonna try not to um, make the the last half of this commentary about you know criticizing the heck out of myself. <laughs> 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 but you know it can't be helped when you go back and you look through older art you know artwork and stuff you know I think all artists do that we just we're very critical of ourselves yes um, well because as we learn new things we look back at old stuff like oh how could I have done that yeah. but like you didn't think about it back then <laughs> oh. oh angry rock eater oh that's the last page well she's definitely angry but he interrupts her yeah, you know, Jeff is equally as angry, but um, and this was really the beginning, you know, where it's just like, you know, uh, sort of Jeff, ex you know, that that whole path where he was kind of explaining. It was just very, everything was doom, you know, everything was about doom, and his mm -hmm. focus was on doom. But um, well, yeah, a few a few panels ago he said we went forward this time, like just mm -hmm. hinting at something. Oh, oh man, I forget that. I forget that I didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah. And that was the thing, you know, he, he went forward and that was sort of an indication that uh, he didn't, he was traveling through time. Um, and, uh, which is completely unusual. Uh, according to, you know, what, what Reduhai said uh, previously, but oh, this story, uh, <laughs> it's, it just, you know, it gets really wacky. Um, at points, especially after this, but uh, yeah, so that was issue 14B. Um, man, I don't know. Did, did you have anything else that you maybe wanted to say? I don't know. I because I honestly can't think of anything. It's such a weird issue for me to, to, to talk about um, because it's just sort of a it's a transitional issue, you know. Oh well, yeah, this issue starts a lot of things that will be fleshed out later. Yeah. It's like a starting off point for uh, a lot of mystery. <laughs> yeah, I like to pile that mystery on. Just keep piling it on, piling it on. I, I love mystery. I can't help it. That's the, like, yeah, that's the best part. Like you get to the last page and then you want to read the next one. Like that's the good thing about it. <laughs> uh, well, thanks. <laughs> trying to think of 
there's anything else to talk about. Well, I guess there's not, uh, I don't want to, well, it's already really close to an hour anyways. Um, so I should probably, uh, in this commentary, um, I want to thank you, Calicard, for uh, hopping in here and sticking around the whole commentary and um, not booing and hissing <laughs> for the whole thing. Um, and not, not too many words. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and and talking a little bit about the uh, the cover that you did, and, and I wanted to say thank you again for oh, yeah, no problem. the cover. That was awesome. Um, I mean, you were like uh, one of the first people to read Goblin when it came out, and one of the first people to watch me on DeviantArt. So I really appreciate that. I didn't that. know that. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, when I first came back to DeviantArt, um, other than people that knew me uh, from school, I think you were one of the first three people that didn't know me that started watching and then started reading Goblin and giving me feedback and stuff. So that was awesome. <laughs> I don't even know how I found you. Uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've been reading Goblin since the first issue when you put it up, and I love the story. Thanks. Yeah. Well, and I mean, well, and then you were honestly, um, <laughs> there's a, lot, a whole lot of patting on the back. But uh, you know, I mean, it was kind of your work that actually inspired the way that I, I do Goblin online in that fashion. And in the Swift, I don't know if I ever mentioned that to you. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, because when I came here, I was still figuring, trying to figure out how to do, you know, do my comics and stuff online. Because I was like, well, I definitely want to have them online because I can't pay for printing. And that's when I found your stuff, and I saw the uh, the comics that you were doing there, where you were using uh, Swift files, and you clicked on the edges, and I was like, oh, yes, that's perfect. And then right after I found yours, I found. This other guy named uh, Balak, I think his name is I think it's Balak O One on DeviantArt, and I found his, and I was just going back and forth between you two guys, and I was like, okay, I have to figure out how to do this, and I went to my teacher, uh, who taught the the Flash class that I was taking at the time, and he showed me a way to do it, and so I started messing around with that, and you know, and I, later on I figured out I figured this sort of a, a much better code to put in there, action script, sort of mm -hmm. to, to get them to to work. Uh, a little bit easier, but yeah, <laughs> it it's was a really easy. fun format. Yeah, but it was it was your stuff that um that kind of inspired that you know that whole format. And everything. Mine is actually pretty barbaric compared to other ones. Like you have to actually click on mine for Goblin. You can use the arrow keys. That was that was it was an accident. It was a complete accident. Like uh, you're gonna have to show me how to do that. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely I can show you the the code and stuff. The code that I I found. Um, that actually pushes them along. I didn't realize that it allowed for, you know, using the um, using the, the the arrows, and so I would just have people, you know, click on the edges, and then I was like, oh, I just accidentally pressed the arrows one day, and I went, oh my goodness, all That's this awesome. time. <laughs> yeah, it's way easier to do arrows than clicking like every single page. Yeah, I think though a lot of people automatically just want to click on the edges of pages of the pages and stuff. So, eh, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, but um. That's, I, that's why I, I do the little thing at the beginning where I tell them you can do either or if you want. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Yeah, the best part about like the side clicking flash format is that you know the way you said the panels can have like a similar thing, but it's a different reaction, almost like animation, but mm -hmm. you know through mm -hmm. sequential art. Yeah, that's and th I mean that's why I was I was so into it is because at the time I was I was in school for animation, and I, I mean I wanted to be a storyboard artist. I still do, and. Oh yeah. This was yeah. This was like the way that I could express that that want and that desire at the same time as doing comics. And you can just those little subtle changes. You know, you see them pop up in, in storyboards all the time. And uh, it's just it's just fun. Those little sometimes they're gag reactions, but mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, there's a huge difference between like one panel at a time and like a full multi-panel page. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can the the way that you can hold people's attention and then surprise them with the next panel. I love that instead mm -hmm. of them being able to gloss over every single pa you know every single panel at the same time. Right. Um, it, there's there's just, I, don't, I love that. That's what I love. You know, and that's what that I mean. Like I said, you know, that's what that's how yours inspired me because you were doing things in your in your comic 
where I was just sitting there one minute and then I got to the next one and I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was like, okay, all right, I like that. Uh, okay. Depending on which one which, uh, you're talking about, I can imagine how there would be a lot of surprises. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, uh, what is it, W? What the fits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I didn't want to say the whole, I didn't want to actually say the word on here, you know, try to make the, the commentary a little, uh, I, you know, I don't, well, you know, somewhat kid-friendly, but I, not really kid-friendly. What are you talking about? It stands for Wacky Tales from Ingenious Teller Snails. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what we intended when we made it. Okay. Well, <laughs> not what I say in my head, but all right. <laughs> but yeah, that was the one. Yeah, that, I think, I believe that was the, yeah, I think that was the one that, that uh, I first came across. Yeah. But definitely. I think we came up with that formula because we were just drawing in class like we are at his house just joking around and we would like use the keys on in flash to go through one panel at a time like it's really fun to go through it like this. Oh yeah? That's funny. Just kind of stumbled upon something fantastic. <laughs> yes. Uh, I just wish that you know that the like you could actually uh, put Swift files in various places on the internet you know. I guess yeah, that's, that's the only problem is you know I mean, I, to a degree, I guess PDFs will sort of, they sort of work the same way. Um, but there's just something about, like, that that Swift format that I like so much. Especially the fact that you can put in those links and you can put in little elements that people can click on within the page, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I like those as well. But there's just something about it uh, over versus PDF. Like, even like this, like this PDF, it's very grainy because of the way that it processes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really difficult. I mean, it would have to be a huge file in order to be really crisp. But with uh, with Swift files, you can just you can make them crisp. You just turn it all the way up to 100, and they come out really nice and vibrant. Yeah, yeah it's always a toss up for me to pick between a really long page if I want to like, put a series of pages together, or just put it all in a Swift. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I still don't know which one I prefer. I'm really attached to, to this to the Swift, you know, that Swift format, that story. I think Swift works that. better for one panel at a time, and then, like, long pages work better for, like, a full page of panels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really addicted to this format now. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly, it, I know it sounds almost, uh, just, it's, it's like blasphemous, but I don't know that I'll ever go back to normal comic book format ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... This is this is how I, I really this is how I actually envisioned it when I when you know because I mean at the time when I when I first thought okay maybe this is how I want them to look like storyboards it was just uh, like things like iPhones and stuff had just come out mm-hmm. and uh, you know there weren't iPads yet but um, I thought okay this works on a it'll work on a little phone and everything and then you know I saw the the Swift the Swift file format and I was like this is perfect but um, I don't know, with the way that the future is pushing forward more and more, and I, I think more and more people will really get into digital comics and start using tablets a little bit more. Um, yeah. One, especially when the, when, once the price really, really drops uh, as more manufacturers make them, I think uh, there'll be more and more of a place for comics like this, I think. So uh, I'm okay. I'm completely okay. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with using this format. <laughs> Yeah. I really enjoy it. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, we should probably end this commentary. Because <laughs> uh, it's just been sitting on this one picture while we talk forever. Okay. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, thank you again for stopping through and listening to me ramble. Uh, yep, yep. And, and talking. And, uh, maybe, um, maybe you can pop in for another commentary sometime later. Mm-hmm. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to hold you to that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I'm going to say to everyone, thank you for watching, and bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>